Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. Today on our episode, we have Stephanie Sansone, who is one of my amazing clients. She is completing her second degree, her honors Bachelor of Science. In her, She's currently in her fourth year. She's been a client of mine for quite some time now. And she is studying biology. Her previous degree was in psychology. And Steph, you're so busy, but we're going to get into that. You've got so much on your plate. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. So I'm in my fourth year of my BSc. I'm writing my honors thesis this year. I'm a full-time student. I work as a pharmacy assistant at Shopper Drugmore Pharmacy. You know, I did a little bit of research at Toronto General Research Institute. I'm a volunteer or I was a volunteer. I had to stop because of school and things like that. But I've been a volunteer with Mount Sinai now since, since 2016. And yeah, that's just a little bit... Just a little bit about me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you you skimmed over a lot of really important, great <laughs> things about you. So <laughs> we're going to get into all of that. But we started working together in mastering academic applications. And so I'm interested to know what caused you to reach out? Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought I thought a lot about this, like throughout, throughout our time together. And honestly, I didn't, at the time that I reached out, which was the beginning of the summer, I hadn't looked at the applications. I didn't even, I didn't know how to work the portal. I didn't know nothing. Like, and it was, the, it's the first time that I'm applying. So I was really, I was really new to everything. And I just didn't know. I felt so overwhelmed because I was also studying for the MCAT too, right? And I just didn't know, I didn't know where to start. Like I had no idea where to start. And so I just, I just needed, I needed a little bit of help just to like figure out where to start and how to like move on, like how to progress through it. So I just, yeah, I was really, really stressed. <laughs> yeah. And so, so what was the most difficult part, would you say, about starting? Finding the time because, mm. because I was, you know, I was taking like an extensive MCAT course as well. Like I just, just felt like I had not enough time during the day. I was always behind on studying and I just like didn't know when I was going to be able to fit in also like yeah, like, you know, application rating and everything, because like I, I was trying to apply to like so many schools, right? And everybody has like their own essays and things like that. And I just like didn't know. I didn't know when I was going to find the time, honestly. And then mm-hmm. time for myself too, on top of it, like I felt like very mentally drained mm-hmm. throughout like, like throughout the entire summer. It just was really, it was really tough. It's probably the most stressful time of my life. So, mm-hmm. well, it's a really intensive process, a yeah. really intensive process. And it's it's really it really requires you to dig deep and i think that that's something that not a lot of people consider when they're writing applications and i right? did not at the beginning i did not consider that at all cuz like i'm just not it's not in me to do that like i'm a very like i like i said you know i volunteer and i did research i work i'm a full time student so i did i just keep i keep doing but i just I never really sat there and reflected on what I was like, why I was doing what I was doing. Like, like obviously there was the end goal of what I, you know, wanting of what I wanted to do with my career, but I never sat there and just thought like, why is this important to me? You know, why is this important to the community? What, what am I doing? That's like meaningful. And like, what's the significance behind doing it? And I just, I never did that. Yeah. And And I remember you had so many, transformative experiences. I think that this summer was really a transformative summer for you. Yeah, it was intense. Yeah. <laughs> it was very intense. And not like, in, like yes, intense in the way that it's like everything was just a lot and there was a lot of work, but intense like mentally, emotionally, in a positive way as well, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, you had to, I, I think one of the things is that 
a lot of these transformative experiences that I'm talking about, and I think we'll we'll talk more about them, Mm -hmm. is that you didn't anticipate them coming. No, definitely And so I think that that was part of the, like, oh God, like, and and now this is what what we're doing. (laughs) And, And so, for example, you know, we started much of our work together with this, with our visualization exercise in order to be able to determine what is it that you want for the rest of your life. So I remember that we were talking because we were in our standard program, which is Mastering Academic Applications, and you were in the one-on-one yeah. in our BIP. And so we had a lot of time together mm-hmm. one-on-one to, to talk about these things and to process these things. And I remember you telling me, you know, this visualization exercise, you know, what's the, you know, what's the point of it? You know, I, I'm just doing all these things. They're, they're yeah. everything that I have to be doing. Let's mm-hmm. just write about them. Like, why do we have to be doing this? And so can you tell me what insights and what sort of realizations you had through the process of actually going through that mindset work? Yeah. So I never, before our visualization, I actually never sat there and visualized anything. Like, I, I, you know, you know what you want to do with your life. You just don't know, like, how it's going to look, I guess. Like, you don't sit there and think about, you know, being in the hospital or like the family that you want to have or like where you want to live. Like you, you just, those are like the very fine details. It's not something that you think about on, well, at least I did not think about it on a regular basis. Actually, it's not think about it at all. So doing that was, was probably the start of the intensity that was coming after that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I remember the first time that I did it and I, I cried which I don't usually, I'm not a very emotional person. And I cried because I just, I want, I realized how bad I wanted it. And it wasn't just the career at that point, like what the applications are going to lead to and all that. It was just everything, like how my life was going to, how I wanted my life to look like personally and professionally and just everything. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really it was really, it was a really big moment for me. And I realized that that visualization, like thinking back to the and reflecting on it back, I realized that that visualization was a huge motive. It was a good thing it happened at the beginning of the program because it was a huge like way to stay motivated, you know, to continue like, okay, mm-hmm. I just have to get through this like really hard application so I can, you know, get into the school that I want and just start working and, and, you know, have that life that, I had visualized, you know, right. so it was, it was definitely, it was definitely very motivational to do that as mm-hmm. a beginning for sure. Right. You said, you know, you know how you wanted your life to turn out, but you didn't know how it would look. Yeah. Yeah. And through the different visualization exercises that we did, your, what you saw for your life actually evolved. Yeah. There were like different aspects of it that were like the main like the main focus, I guess, of the visualization, like where my brain went was like different for each thing. And there was always like a constant theme of like who was going to, who was there, what I was doing, like, you know, career rise, like, like how I felt like they were they, like, that was like a constant theme, but like the, like the snapshots that like came up were like, di- were, were different. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was- and I remember in, in our in-person then when we did this exercise, you know, we're all, it was summer at the time. So we're all outside on our, you know, blankets sitting all around and quite a few of us there. And he said to me that, oh, I didn't expect to be thinking about this. And mm-hmm. something came up for you that you didn't quite expect. And I said, that's okay. Just go with it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so the, the evolution, I think of what we see for ourselves is also so important because it's not just a static you visualize this one time and it's over, mm-hmm. right? You're, what you see for yourself actually grows and develops. And so I, I really like something you said earlier, which is that, you know, this is the life that you want to create, you want to build. And the applications are sort of the, the one of the ways there. Yeah. yeah and so sure. something I always say, and now I think you you have a much better understanding of why I say this, is that it's not just about the applications. It's about your life. Mm-hmm. The applications is just a thing that you have to <laughs> kind of get over to get to the the main the main goal. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, I those are really. I mean, know. they're really intense. And so, what does that mean to you now? 
it's not just about the applications, it's about your life. Does it have like more significance for you for now? For sure, for sure. It's it's For me now, it's about the idea that I had, especially that first first visualization. Like it was personal in, the, in terms of like in five years, like I saw where I wanted to go to work and like it was more, it wasn't like a specific hospital that I want to work at, but I knew I wanted to go to a hospital where waking up in the morning, what I wanted to do when I woke up, things like that, like like literally just a day in my life, five years down the line. But yeah, the application was just like a stepping stone to get to get there. And I just, I remember that visualization so vividly because I just felt so content and just like, I just felt really happy when I, when I saw what I like when I saw it. Yeah. So I just, yeah. So the, the application was just a stepping stone to that. And I'm still going to continue to strive for that. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. And so then after that, we worked on your CV and your resume. Mm-hmm. And tell me about that experience for you. It was, it was pretty incredible. But I still use, like I used that template that you gave us yeah. for resumes to apply to recent jobs. Yeah. Actually just, you know, recently. For everything. Yeah. And I, I use that CV template, like it's saved on my computer now to continue just to expand it. So those, those two things are probably going to be like out of the, the modules. Those two things are probably going to be like the most used throughout my life. Like later on, like, you know, after acceptance, after working, yeah. everything, I think that will be, that will be huge to get to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Because be the, the modules. So for, for anyone who hasn't yet enrolled, the modules are the the bulk of the modules are really focused on the applications themselves but you exactly. can't get to the applications themselves without doing your cv and resume yeah so maybe steph yeah. can explain to us why you can't do your applications without your cv and your resume because there were things that i forgot that i did like you just you get really like at, over time, you're just doing so many things that you kind of just don't remember the things that you did previously. And and even in a specific role, there are so many different things that you do. Like, like in my volunteer role, for example, I'm out of Sinai, like in the psychiatric unit, I did research. I did volunteer work. There was a time I was running like four or five different groups and co-running group, groups. And then you just don't remember all the 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 minute things that you did and then writing the CV like for the application, right? And then writing the CV, he just like really helps you to remember everything that you did, like to like the fine detail, which is so, so important for the applications because those fine details are just like why, like helps you understand why it was significant to you, you know? Like, why did I do that one thing? Yeah, that's really, really important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a super big fan of the CV. <laughs> yeah, and and you will you 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 will use it forever. The the so the template that you're that Steph's talking about is a template that I've created over the last fifteen years. It's the te- it's the format that I currently use in my CV and resume that I have been using since I developed it, and it's copyrighted. And I give it to all of my clients who work with me because that is just how important it is. And you will use it forever for any field. I've used it in across fields, across the research fields, the teaching fields, the legal field, like everything. And it is, it's certainly not a Googled template. Let me tell you that. (laughs) And I just want to add that even though it's so applicable to literally every single profession, it is the template itself is so, I don't want to say like, it's simple, that it's so easy to put your experiences in there because like it's so laid out it's like so you know it's so laid out perfectly and it's so easy to just think about your experiences and just put them in and everything is just and then at the end it's just so beautiful it really is (laughs) did you ever think you would say that (laughs) no (laughs) you know it's funny actually before we started i thought a resume and cv were interchangeable Mm -hmm. i thought they were the same thing Knowing the difference now, it's just, it is so important. It's so important. And just, you know, I just want to put it out there for people out there very, very simply. A resume is a shortened version of your CV for the, for what you're applying to. The CV is everything you've ever done. So that's right. Very, very important to know the difference. And that's I did right. not know the difference before, our, before the program. You know what? So many people don't. 
so many. And once upon a time, I didn't either, right? So it's it's everything that you're going through. I absolutely have been there as an applicant, as a student. And so all of the realizations that you're going through, I've also been through. And so I think that it's, you know, it's so normal not to know the difference. But now once you have the tools, you can use them forever. Yeah. So my resume before the template was at least three to four pages, I think. Three to four pages. And it did not even remotely include everything like I've ever, I've ever done. You know what I mean? And already it went over as I just like over like page limit and stuff like that. It was just, it was a mess. Like when, when you look back after doing a resume with your template, doing the CV, when you look back at like my old resume, oh my gosh, I was like, how, how did I give this to people? <laughs> <laughs> well, like it was just what a mess. So I, yeah, I mean, I love it. And what I'm hearing is you feel so much better about the, about how you're representing yourself on paper. Yeah, I do. Because it's everything. Yeah. Yeah. So how was it? So, so I want to talk about the one-on-one sessions together, because I think that that was a really crucial component of the work that, that we did and, and your journey through this process. So can you just reflect a bit on your experience going through the process one-on-one and the kind of work that we did together and how that how that was for you? Well, I, I didn't, I think, you know, I've told you this before. I think that the, the group sessions are, you know, so beneficial, like just very briefly. I think they're so beneficial yeah. because, you know, you there are ideas and stuff brought forth by like everybody, other people in the cohort that maybe you just didn't think of yourself, like questions to ask and things like that. But you need the one-on-one. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I, I just think that it is... So, so, so vital to ensuring that your application is individualized and that it, it represents like your true self. And that, that, you know, that sounds a little cheesy and like I got that. But like, like I said, like I mentioned before, this, I don't, I was never the type to like sit and reflect on the things that I did. Like I just did, did, did. And I never... Like, I never really thought about why I was doing it, why it was important to me and, you know, why it was important more generally. And that one-on-one was so important to be able to just say it, to, like, articulate why I did those things. Why did I spend five years in the psychiatric unit doing all those things? Why did I spend longer in research, you know, like, in the same lab? Like, what, what did I learn? And I never sat there and reflected on that. And those one-on-ones were so important to do that, to then write it down in in your applications. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was so important. And I don't think that I would have been able to have that re- sort of reflection and just doing the group sessions. Honestly, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. And well, right, because- positive, I wouldn't have. Yeah. Well, the group sessions, I think you're absolutely right. The group sessions are wonderful for for those people who don't want to do the one-on-one and that's mm-hmm. perfectly fine. And you can create and craft your uh, an amazing application with the standard program, with, with mm-hmm. the standard oh, program. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And the, but the one-on-one, of course, is much more, you get much more time with me alone where we sit together and it actually, part of my role in the one-on-one is as you've said, really picking apart your experiences to make you think about them. Yeah, yeah. And just, I'm just like, for, for people that aren't able to reflect on their own and, and, and don't do that regularly, which I was definitely one of those people, that like that is where the one on one comes in. Like, it's just taking that hour, hour and a half to like pick it apart, like you said, and just really think about it. Not just, not just get up and do all the time. Because, you know, especially... For people apply, like they're, everybody wants to have so much experience and, and, you know, it's great that they do, but why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? And, and it's just so hard sometimes to think about that. And I didn't know where to start thinking about that. Yeah. And even you could see it in all like the, like the group coaching calls. Like I've, I've talked about this. Like I just don't know. Like I, I was so scared to start reflecting because I didn't know where to start. Mm. I didn't know how to do it, like how to do it, because honestly, there's no one way of doing it. But yeah, so the one-on-one was just, it was like, I, I so sad. <laughs> like it was, it was amazing. Yeah. The guidance I think is, is something that, because absolutely like, why should you know where to start? Right. You weren't, we weren't born knowing how to go through this process. 
right? And I and definitely the, was not. I definitely did not know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I, I was I was always scared to talk about stuff like this because like, you know, you don't want to think about things wrong, like not wrong with you, but things that you don't know how to do. Right. And and through this process, I got so comfortable just being able to talk about this now because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> like, I had no idea what I was doing. And every one on one, I got more and more just like and don't get me wrong, when I articulated it, it, it didn't come out you know, what you write, what you write down. But over time, you like are able to refine it, like having the thoughts on paper, and then you can refine it. But it's the first having getting those thoughts on paper is so important. That yeah. You cannot not skip that step. Right, right. Yeah. And I think one of the important things that you brought up was that, you know, you and we, and I said this earlier, that you did, you had so much experience. And my question to you, every single question that we worked on, every single everything was, okay, what, what was the significance to you? So we know, for example, like why you were engaging in these roles more broadly. You're engaging in these roles more broadly because you're on your path to your goal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's why you're doing all this hard work. But at the end of the day, we have to talk about the significance of your experience, really showcasing yourself, what you bring to the table. And yeah. so those conversations about significance, what was the significance of this role? What was the significance of, for example, you getting several contracts with the same lab over and over again? What does that show, yeah. right? Yeah. It wasn't just about, okay, you know, I did the data entry or I became a, a co-author, which you did, and that was amazing. But it's about the significance. Like what you're absolutely right. What did you learn? What do you take away from it? And what does that add to your applications in a way that the committees are going to say, Oh, I get it. I, I, I know. I feel like I know her. That's yeah. what we want. We want See, them to know you. Yeah. And I like, I always thought that the significance was being like, you know, being able to do, to get two or uh, two formal contracts with the same lab, you know, I thought that's what was significant about it. So diving deeper and saying like, no, like, you know, that's, you, you did that, but why did that happen? Like, it wasn't about the fact that that was the significant part, like, you know, it's great, but why did that happen? And right. that's because, you know, they see the hard work and all of that. So it was just going an extra step that, Instead of just describing, like you always say, like it's it's going that extra step to to really like like the why, like it's just like super super important. And I just never did that on my own. I was never able, like, I just never did it on my own. So when it when it came time for the application, I was not able to do it on my own because yeah. I just didn't know where to start because it's not something I did. And so through this process, something that you said to me in I think one of our last sessions together was that. And we still have our ongoing weekly success society. You're in that. We're so excited that that, that has taken off. So actually, we have our next session today. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things that you said to me in, in one of our last one-on-ones in working on your applications was how much your mindset has has shifted to be more positive, how much the work that that we did together over the summer that you did over mm -hmm. the summer has shifted your relationships yep so can you tell me a little bit about that experience for you for me it wasn't even just that the applications were stressful and you know mcat was stressed like every like you're always going to have stress you know so but it was also and i think a lot of this is also the group coaching calls as well where we talked about competition mindset mm -hmm. and things like that so I realized that through like a lot of thinking about like the people that I want in my life and the people that are in my life that are here for me, you know, like because they they care about me and things like that. Like I realized that I had a really negative mindset, not even just like it's not competition. It's just negative in general. And I felt and I saw that, you know, with our work, I saw that I was adding negativity into my relationships to like and I was I was creating things in my in my mind so that I brought negativity into my relationships that were a positive thing in my life it's like I, I had to like there had to be some sort of negative energy there so mm -hmm. my work really just helped me to step outside so when I like now now it's now when I see myself like don't get me wrong there's still times like I'm still putting 
negativity into my relationships. But now I can, I'm able to kind of step outside of it and be like, okay, but why? Like, that's negative. Is, is that actually real? Like, are you creating this negative, this negative situation are, to cause problems? Like these things like this, like I'm able to now come out of it and logically think about it and be like, and be like, you know, like, like, let's shift that. So I, and then that work happens even, you know, even through the growth coaching call, you get that kind of like, yeah, because we talked about a, that a lot about like negative, like mindset and that the energy that goes into being negative. And my God, I was, I was putting a lot of energy into like, I was sitting, like I said, like creating these negative like situations to like feed the negativity into like my relationships, like. And now I catch myself doing that, which is, you know, something I never did before. Yeah. I just always thought that, you know, these people cared about me, my family cared about me, my partner cared about me, that they would have to just, that they would put up with that negativity and just, you know, give me the positive instead of me giving it to myself and then feeding my relationships with that positivity. You know what I mean? But that's not their job. Like, like they did it enough to show that they cared about me, but it's not their job to to give to like feed my negative like like feed my negativity po- like and give me positive you know what I mean like mm-hmm. that's not and and do and and assuming that and and putting that pressure on them was more negative you mm-hmm. know what I mean so that's so powerful so, yeah and I I learned I learned a lot this summer <laughs> I learned a lot this summer wow you know you're, it's still a work in progress you're still working at it but I know that the relationships that are in my life right now because, you know, we talked about this, like, are these people serving you? And I, and I know that the relationships in my life are right now are serving me. Like they're here for me. They're here. They want the best for me. So I can't be putting in, like, I can't be like putting in this negative, this negativity into them because I can't, because as much as they care about me, like I can't expect them to put up with that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's not, yeah. If I care about them like they care about me, then that shouldn't be something that I do. And and now I know that, and you, I consciously am thinking that all the time. And it's a it's a lot of work to to consciously think about being it positive. Is. Like it's it's a lot of work. Like it is so much energy to put in negative. But you know, over time, I'm hoping that that it'll just come more naturally to me. You know, it's so, definitely a skill. That's definitely a skill. And yeah, I think that that is one of the a huge takeaway for you from all of this is that you you have the foundation in order to continue to build on that now. And you're catching yourself doing that, which mm-hmm. is great. Don't get me wrong. I slip up from time to time. <laughs> for sure. And 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 that's that's natural, right? Yeah. But yeah. to be able to identify that and so humbly, so many, so many people do this. And mm-hmm. to be able to reflect and realize is such a powerful thing, not just the reflection and the realization, but also being able to admit it. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And honestly, like before I never, like I never had a problem admitting that I was, I I put in negativity, but I had this, this mentality as though that I, that I deserve to, you know, but you don't, you don't deserve to treat anyone negatively let alone people that you love and and people that support you, you literally unconditionally. Like like something that I learned from my parents, like, you know, they really financially supported me this summer, like a great deal. And and you know, I like I'm not well, well, well off, you know, like so that that kind of fine finance that my parents gave to me is not something we can come by regularly or easily. And they just they they just like was like they would just say, you know what, if this is something you need, you know, this, you know, the MCAT course, the program, the two programs that we did together, like, yeah. They're like, you know, if you really believe that this is gonna help, well, they just they just did it. They just did it. Like, like here you go. And it's not something I even have to pay back. Like they don't want me to pay it back. They just like want me to get in. So mm-hmm. like we know that you're gonna get in. Like like there's no way because like you've done all of this and now you like and now you're able to you know make it like a, a killer application yeah. so like it's like you know we do what we can mm-hmm. absolutely and they, and they just never stop supporting me yeah so and we talked like, about them a lot 
Yeah, yeah, we did. And like, you know, and my family is not a family that shows affection, like, you know, overtly. We're not, we're not the type of family. We just never were. But, and, and I, like, I, I haven't been the best daughter because I like, you know, like, it's just a lot of stress. Like I've just always, like, it's just a lot. But this summer I've really come to real, like, I've really, I've just really seen how much they want me to succeed. Like I, and I just, it's it, like, you know that they want you to succeed, but you, but seeing it so like, like, so like, they're so willing to help. Yeah, it was, it was a big eye opener for me. Even like, even my, you know, my personal relationship, like my partner, like same thing with him. Like, like he was just, he was so supportive to me this this summer too right after like everything that I had going on and that also made me realize like how much negativity that I've tried to put into my relationship with him and he's been there he's you know he's like I said he fed me that positivity when I needed it and he kept doing that like it was like a daily if not multiple times a day kind of thing but it got to the point where it's like I'm negatively impacting his life now and that like you know and work the work that we've done together helped me to take a step back and realize like you you know you love this person and you should not be that it's not up to them to to like to make you positive you know and it's just like there was just a lot of that kind of eye-opening experience this summer so I'm just so overall I'm just working on that still and it, it feels good to to know that I, I I did it, like to know that I I had I was putting in that negativity, and to really just take a step back and be like, you need to support them as much as they're supporting you, and, and feeding in that negativity into your relationships is not going to it's not going to support them. If anything, it's going to do the opposite. <laughs> so, right. right. So yeah, it was really important for me to that I learned that. It was a big thing. Thank you for sharing that. I, yeah, I so appreciate good. that. And so that leads into my next question, which is. What did you expect when you first enrolled versus <laughs> what happened? Honestly, I, I, I expected a stellar application because like, you know, I just, you know, after our three hour call together, actually after our beginning call before the program, I just like saw that we were like, so it was like, I knew for so long, like, and I had just, I remember that. It. Yeah. So I thought like, you know, I just expected a really good application but I didn't know how much went into it. So yes, this completely met my expectations, but it, it was so, it was just so much more than that. It was like everything, you know, everything I've been saying, it's just like, it was so, there was so much more yeah. that went into it. And then because of that, there was so much more that came out of it, you know? Personally and professionally. I mean, uh, the growth that I've seen in you is out of this world. In just, yeah. in just, you know, four or five months. Yeah. Of, we worked very intensively together, which yeah. I really enjoyed, to be quite honest. I mean, it was, we had a great time. Like everybody thinks applications are such a drag, but was it a drag? Okay. <laughs> the application is a drag, but doing it with like, you know, having help with from you in the program, that was like not the drag. <laughs> that made it less of a drag. But like writing the essays were, it was, it was tough work. I'm not going to say it that tough. it wasn't. You no, know? it's absolutely tough. And reflecting on your experiences is tough. Yep. Because like when you're in the middle of doing it, you don't know why you're doing it, you know? So to sit back and think about why you're doing things or why you do things, like it's it's a lot of work. But being able to have someone that, you know, nudges you in the right direction, like think about this and why is this important to you? Like, you know, like having that guidance like we were talking about before is was like was the good part about it you know was the less stressful part right because as someone like like i like i said before like i'm not someone that did this regularly and i had no idea where to start so it would have been i like i think back and think like how much more stressful would it have been if i didn't have guidance on thinking about my significance like where do i look for significance kind of thing or i, I would probably wouldn't have met the deadline that's for sure <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And the fact is, like, I was finished quite early. Like, I was, I submitted the day before, but I was, I was done a lot earlier, a week earlier than, you know, the deadlines. So. That's right. That's so, right. 
You were. Yeah. You were. And so, as you know, we have a very, very strong non-competition policy. Mm -hmm. How did that, how did our zero tolerance policy for competitive natured behavior and knowing that you're coming, you're joining a community, becoming part of a community yeah. that is supportive and encouraging and there's no place for competition here. How did that affect your experience? Honestly, at the beginning, it was tough because I kept like we were being a group coaching call and I kept thinking, like, is this person applying where I'm applying? Is this, sorry, is this person applying where I'm applying? Is this person applying where I'm applying? And over time, I realized that nobody was trying to get my thought. You know what I mean? And then we just, uh, we just all became friends. Yeah. So, and so the final question that I have for you today is what is a piece of advice that you would give your younger or previous self through this process? Okay, well, so I, I thought about this too. And I think that in high school, I like, I, I hated science and things like that. Like I just like, it was not my cup of tea. So at the, my last year of high school, I took like, like, you know, like kind of like, like elective courses because I, 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 did I like what I knew at that time is I didn't want to get into science, right? But what I would tell myself in high school is that you have no idea what you want to do, you know, like, and everything changed. Like, your idea of what you want is going to change in, in five years. So take the courses that, you know, you're, you're uncomfortable with. Like, I know it's, you, I know it's like weird to say because everyone wants to get good grades and things like that. And like, you know, at the time I didn't like science because my my profs were just like, were just doing a job. Like they weren't passionate, you know, like it was just like, it was not enjoyable for me. If I can tell her anything, it's just take the courses because you have no idea what you want to do. You're not going to know what you want to do later in life. And what I had to do was during the summer, I had to take grade 12 courses in university university yeah. to get the credit because I hadn't taken one and right. that was like it was just a huge like it was just like an extra added stress on me that I didn't I wouldn't have needed if I just take like you know if I just had taken the course that I was uncomfortable with because you don't know like you don't know like your decisions your ideas are going to change as you mature so you just don't know so do everything mm. do everything early <laughs> <laughs> Do th yeah. So don't don't close any doors. Exactly. Don't when doors. when you're not yet in a position that you're deciding. Exactly. And my and I was so like dead set shut. And it's just mm -hmm. don't do that. Just stay open to everything and see what life has to offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. See what life has to offer because that's what it's about. Yes. Right. It's about your life. This is why we go through every single thing that we do. Because it's about your life. It's about yeah. getting to know yourself, getting to know your values, your goals, what it is that you actually want for yourself mm -hmm. and the people around you that you bring along with you on your journey. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Steph, I have to tell you, I am so proud of the work that you've accomplished. You have made so much transformation and there were so many days when, when we talked about how challenging going through this process of self-discovery and sense of self can be. Mm -hmm. But you have learned so much in such a short time. You've developed such amazing foundations. And I cannot wait to just continue on your journey with you. We've got the Success Society. We've got our other work together. And mm -hmm. I'm so, I'm just so proud of the, the effort that you've put in. And, yeah, and nothing and comes without effort. And I yeah. realized that nothing comes without effort. And you just, you know, you know that in school and, and everything. But like this summer, I just really realized that like, that like everything requires effort. Your relationships require effort. Your professional life requires, well, of course, you know that, you know, your work requires effort. But like, you don't realize how much effort actually should go into your relationships to your personal life. Because, and you yourself. know, a lot of people say, yeah, a lot of people say that, you know, things that are, are good for you or meant for you shouldn't be hard. It should come easy. That's bull. 
<laughs> that is so <laughs> bull. That is so bull. I'm sorry, but it's if anything is good for you, then you need to work the heck for it. Like you need to work your ass off. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. I love. It. Let's let's end on that note. I think that's great. <laughs> Well, we got to go anyway. We got to go. We have the success See society. You it. Yeah. <laughs> so Steph, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome back anytime. Thanks. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us and we'll thank see you, you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.